nerf gas, developed during World War II, was slightly modified to make insecticides. DDT was the hero of its generation. New technologies promised higher yields, increased food production, cheaper prices, and greater availability. By the mid-20th century, these technologies, along with new developments in plant breeding, led to the Green Revolution. 97% of the varieties of vegetables grown at the beginning of the 20th century are now extinct. Genetic uniformity leads to an increased vulnerability to insects and disease. Farmers found themselves trapped on a pesticide treadmill. The more they sprayed, the more they had to spray. The increased use of fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides increased costs, polluted water, and created health risks. Then in the 1970s, Monsanto introduced Roundup. Because of its ability to kill most weeds, it became one of the most popular herbicides in history. In the mid-1990s, building on technologies that use gene splicing, the Green Revolution turned into the Gene Revolution. Capitalizing on the new technology, Monsanto genetically modified its seeds to be Roundup ready. Normally, Roundup kills anything green. But if the plant is Roundup ready, when it is sprayed, it doesn't die. Monsanto's BT corn, the corn itself is registered as an insecticide. This is because every cell has been engineered to manufacture BT, a natural bacterial toxin. If a corn borer eats any part of the plant, it will die. All species have developed elaborate mechanisms over millions of years to protect their cells from invasion from foreign DNA. Genetic engineers have to overcome the integrity of the species barrier to insert a new genetic trait into a plant or animal. When scientists began genetic engineering 30 years ago, they believed that one gene expressed one trait, that transgenic DNA would be stable even when forced to cross species barriers. A new technique of molecular biology appears to have allowed us to outdo the standard events of evolution. It is not known what sort of risk this is going to create because we have no tests. The conference delegates voted against the moratorium, but did pledge to keep all recombinant DNA and genetically engineered organisms contained safely within laboratories. Currently, both agriculture and medical biotechnology use genetic engineering. Medical biotechnology has created many life-saving products. These pharmaceuticals are made under controlled conditions in secure labs. Genetically modified plants, unlike drugs, reproduce, and once released into the environment, cannot be controlled. Using biotechnology to produce food is not new. For nearly 6,000 years, people have used yeast, a living organism, to make bread rise. And we've used biotech for almost as long to ferment beer and wine. So there's really nothing new here. Um, but that is completely wrong. Genetic engineering is really a radical revolution in food production. It's really a cell invasion technology. You know, people have heard they're taking a flounder gene and putting it in tomato so the tomato can last in, in cold temperatures. But people ask, how does that flounder gene get in that tomato? How does it get in there? And what really happens is the only way you can do it is to invade the cell 
of the tomato and deposit the flounder gene. Well, what's good at invading cells? Bacteria and viruses. After 12 years of searching, Monsanto found a soil bacteria that is naturally immune to Roundup herbicide. Their goal was to genetically engineer DNA from these bacteria into various plants. Some of the E. coli DNA recombines with the Roundup resistant bacteria. Then the technicians smuggle the engineered DNA into the cells of the corn plant they want to modify. Cells will naturally reject foreign DNA, so they developed a method using soil bacteria that causes tumors in plants. They use this bacteria to ferry the engineered DNA into the plant's nucleus. There are also two other methods used to get the engineered DNA through the cell wall. One uses a stream of electricity to create tiny holes in the plant cells so they become vulnerable to infiltration by foreign DNA. Another is the gene gun, which blasts particles of gold coated with engineered DNA into the plant cells. Each of these three methods needs a promoter gene that turns on the desired characteristics. The promoter gene is often extracted from the cauliflower mosaic virus. This capacity of bacteria and viruses to invade ma mammals in different ways is what really has a lot of people edgy about biotechnology because that's, that's really what the tools are all about. In order to move genetic material from one organism to another that don't normally cross, you've got to sort of behave like bacteria and viruses and invade into the cells and become established just like a virus must become established. And they do one more thing. They attach to that an antibiotic marker system. The antibiotic marker is a gene which is naturally resistant to a specific antibiotic. So later they can test whether the genetic cassette is being expressed. The most cataclysmic force in the food system right now is the fact that the medical community has, is just terrified about the loss of antibiotics. No one really understands how using antibiotic marker genes in genetic engineering techniques might contribute to the problem. The biomedical community on a worldwide basis is absolutely focused on this problem now. transgenic manipulations, we'll start seeing pieces of DNA interacting with each other in ways that are totally unpredictable. We have now learned that genes function in complex networks, and a single gene can express or influence many traits. I think uh, this is probably the largest biological experiment humanity has ever entered into.